You're listening to episode eight with Shannon Sturgis of the Modern Actor Podcast. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of The Modern Actor. I'm your host and creator of The Modern Actor, Eddie Ramos. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode and um, for sharing your earbuds with me. I really appreciate it. I'm glad to have you back. So this last week since I turned 27 on the 16th um, has been a little weird. Um, just I kind of just felt like I wasn't grounded and... My head was cloudy, and I don't know if that's an effect of being 27, if there's any 27-year-olds out there who are, or anybody older that can shed some light on this uh, uh, happening. I don't know. Um, I've just been feeling a little weird and not in my body. And then, you know, I was going out on a lot of auditions, which is great, obviously. I'm super blessed, super happy about that. But you didn't really get kind of the response and feedback that I was hoping for. I was hoping on this big pilot, didn't get... I'm not going forward on the pilot. So I'm kind of just feeling a little like meh, a little blah. Um, But, and then, okay, but then I also was shooting this short film, um, A Song to Pass the Time. You guys might have seen that on my social media, on my Instagram that I was like posting about that. And all week, on top of like, you know, having to memorize for these big pilot auditions and stuff, I was also kind of worried about like, you know, my preparation and like being in character. Like, am I going to be able to do this? And filming in uh, Lake Arrowhead and being away for three days, away from my girlfriend and my dog. I was a little worried, you know, so I felt like uneasy and ungrounded. Um, and so anyway, but by the time I got to Lake Arrowhead and I kind of just breathed, and it was beautiful up there, and it was n- nature-filled, and I was surrounded by peace and quiet and the lake. Um, and by the way, Lake Arrowhead is like this amazing place, like about an hour and a half away from Los Angeles east. It's gorgeous up there. You go up this like giant mountain anyway to get up there. Um, by the time I got up there and we started filming, I really felt like I could sink into the moments and just realize like, you know... I am where I'm supposed to be in life. I do know what I'm doing. And I really just had to trust that. And literally the week could not have gone, or sorry, the weekend could not have gone better. The film could not have gone better. I felt dialed in and the complete 180 of how I felt uh, the week following or the week um, preceding, nope, the week following up to the shoot there was just so much art and I don't know I can keep going on and on about it but like it was truly just a great weekend and it reinvigorated me and inspired me going into this uh past week um this last Monday so so I get back to LA and it was like boom weirdness all over again I was like back in a fog as soon as I got back to the smog um I I had a very awkward interaction with like an actor that I've auditioned with before where we were like waving to each other, but we like didn't say hi. Like I was in my car and I didn't roll down my window to say what's up. And he was just like smirking. I was weird. (laughs) But then Tuesday night, I went to this SAG next gen performance uh, performers event and it was boom it was amazing and i spoke to artists um and networked and again i felt leaving um sorry i I left feeling inspired and creative and i realized also that this funk is called resistance as per the book that i'm reading right now um that i'm sure uh, some of you out there have already read called war of art by stephen pressfield it has been mind blowing i love this book so much um basically um like all procrastination and fear and anxiety and things like that can all be labeled Um, as this concept of resistance and resistance lives in your life to hold you back from your dreams hold you back from your goals Um, and it's like these obstacles and these blocks in your life that are truly unnecessary and once I compartmentalized it by calling it resistance you know by the as per like the author Stephen Pressfield to do that it was crazy how fast things cleared up again. Like all this fog in my head, 
it was kind of like the brain dump that you do in the artist way where you write for like five minutes, whatever comes to your head. So like once this fog, I was able to like say, no, 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 this is just resistance. It was like, boom, I could get back to my auditions. I could get back to like myself. I felt like I was grounded again. I got back to like banging out this podcast for you guys. It was it like anyway, <laughs> I'm still kind of like trying to comprehend everything, but like what I learned was that the two big lessons that I took away from these past two weeks have been like to spark that creative conversation with other artists and to recognize resistance in my life and work past it. That's what my guest Shannon Sturgis speaks on in our interview. She talks about the value of letting go and trusting your deeper, your deeper truth. With that said, I hope the coming of this full moon didn't mess you up too bad. If it did, I think this episode with actress and acting coach Shannon Sturgis will make you feel better. On that note, here's my interview with Shannon Sturgis. Hi there. Just wanted to let you know that uh, this interview features adults having adult conversations, or at least we tried to be adults, um, but therefore there might be adult language. So I just wanted to give you the heads up in case you were listening to this at home where the kids are around. Um, I would not want to be the one to teach them bad words. I don't want you to come back and say, Eddie from The Modern Actor, you taught my kid to say blank. Anyway, um, enjoy the interview, guys. Thank you so much for being with me, and I will see you on the other side. Shannon Sturgis has taken her 25 and more years of professional acting experience and utilized her talent to become one of the entertainment industry's most sought after and respected teachers in the business. Born to two working actors and the granddaughter of legendary writer-director Preston Sturgis, one could say that acting has always been in Sturgis' blood. Discovered in a college acting class by coach Aaron Spizer, now 30 years later, they are partners in Los Angeles' top acting studios, Spizer Sturgis. Sturgis' extensive TV and film credits include starring roles in feature films SWAT, The Shift, and Mr. Right. Her most popular television role was starring in the hit Aaron Spelling series, Savannah, and during the show's run was selected as one of People Magazine's 50 Most Beautiful People in the World. She starred in telefilms such as Wives He Forgot with Molly Ringwald, Tornado with Bruce Campbell, and Silent Predators with Harry Hamlin. Other notable TV credits include Nip Tuck, Cold Case, Charmed, Brimstone, Boomtown, Extreme, Passions, Port Charles, and Days of Our Lives. Sturgis has brought her training and onset experience to the Spizer Sturgis helping not only beginning actors, but experienced actors as well. Respected filmer, uh, filmmakers such as F. Gary Gray, Gerard Butler, and Christian Gudegast, and Will Smith's Westbrook Entertainment have also hired her for their productions. Um, I usually don't read bios, but that one was so well written, and um, and like there's so much to unpack there. It sounds really impressive, doesn't it? It really is impressive, <laughs> and it also just it really is impressive. Um, so thank you so much for being on the show, Shannon. Absolutely, a pleasure uh, to meet I'm you. I'm really excited, and I'm blessed to have you here. Thank you. Uh, yeah, and um, as you know, the Modern Actor Podcast is for actors of all levels. But what we'd like to do is highlight um, actors and actresses who aren't quite household names just yet, but are well on their way. And um, in that journey, they share their tips, advice, and uh, pitfalls to avoid um, in acting and the business of acting. And um, last episode, we had um, AJ Javeri, who is the owner of Argentum Photo Lab. I know AJ. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. and you know, and, to, and this episode, we're going to have you on. And so we also like to showcase industry leaders who have enormous success, like your like yourself, um, who want to give back to those who are coming after them, and like you know, drop the ladder down a little bit. So. I'm so excited and grateful to have you. Um, I think the listener is going to get a lot of value from our episode as well. Oh, I hope so. I hope so too. <laughs> I know so. And so we're going to. What's, what's wonderful is you've built this beautiful community for actors, an online community for people to yeah. connect and help one another and support one another because artists need community. Yeah, that's the goal for sure. Artists definitely need each other to soundboards, um, a support. Um, and. So I just want to say again, thank you. And we're going to get into your acting career, your um, your uh, acting coaching, and your career in uh, acting teaching as well at Spizer Sturges. But before we get to that, I want to start at the beginning. 
your your great no no sorry your grandfather yes. Preston Sturges was a uh, an actor director and inventor. Well, uh, yeah, I forgot about the inventor part. He was he was a writer director is really okay. what he was known for. Right. He was one of the first. Right. He uh, famously sold an Oscar winning screenplay for some say ten dollars, <laughs> um, so that he could direct it because back then writers and directors were two separate spheres, mm. but. He didn't want anybody messing with his script, so he him. started to direct. Good for him. That's, I mean, that's amazing. And then your, yeah, so he was also, he was voted Entertainment Weekly's like best, uh, 28 best directors of all time. You mentioned he won an Oscar in 1941, like at the height of the golden age of Hollywood. How cool. His movies are amazing. Oh, They're so much fun. That's awesome. <laughs> and then your parents are actors as well. Yes, they're, they're both deceased. Right. Um, my, uh, but it's really how I, in some ways, got to know. I never knew my mother. She died when mm. I was an infant. But I've gotten to see her in film. It's very weird. Wow. Um, it's really, uh, and then my, my father had a fair amount of success, mm. you know, early. Um, so I kind of thought, all right, I'll take all of this experience that they have and I'll make some better choices than some of them made. <laughs> right. So that was the question I was going to start with was, was acting always in the cards for you? Probably yes. <laughs> right, right. Um, These are uncles also in the entertainment industry, right? Yeah, I have a, I have two uncles, and uh, one's a writer, and right. the other's in the music business, and also a writer. Wow. So yeah. Um, so I was raised by my grandmother, my paternal grandmother, mm -hmm. and um, I think it scared the heck out of her. I don't think she wanted me to be an actor. I think she'd seen uh, the negative side of show business, mm -hmm. and she just really wanted me to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. That's really what she wanted. It was the path. So, um, you know, I went to school. I did the things that, that would make her happy while right. continuing to pursue acting. Oh, sort of okay. Secretly. Wow. <laughs> and... Um, I remember being in uh, class at UCLA mm. um, with Doogie Howser sides in my lap, <laughs> trying to focus on, I think, a class on Dostoevsky. Oh. And I just went, I can't do all of this. So mm. I dropped out of school. Mm. I went back. Yeah. <laughs> I, good, I, you know, uh, but. Uh, and School's great. It, yeah. Right. It, yeah. I yeah. highly recommend and it. And UCLA, but, come on. Right. Yeah. But acting is, you know, it's never too late to start. Mm. But if you can start early, that will help. <laughs> Right. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt, you know, they're 19 year olds. There's only so many. So right. it's good to start young if you can. Absolutely. But it's never too late. I want to, I have people ask me that all the time. And absolutely not. So that's yeah. great advice. And I think it's, I mean, we could talk about this also, but as a sidetrack note, the older you are, the more experienced you are in life anyway. If acting is just being a human being, you know what I mean? And, and sharing experiences what better than a person who's seasoned you know you what i mean you only right. get better right you right. Own, you right. actors are fine wines yeah. but you know sometimes <laughs> You can't you can't fake nineteen, right? Absolutely, <laughs> which I'm trying to do all the time. Um, and so, so you mentioned you know starting young. Did you have that kind of leg up? Because your family was in the entertainment business, did you get Not advice at all? Okay, um, it would be lovely. I think a lot of right. people thought I did, but right. my grandfather died before I was born, oh. um, and there really was no legacy there in terms of anybody to help me. Mm. Um, I had an early manager suggest that I change my last name wow. when it's like that's an Academy Award winning last name. Right. <laughs> that's right. like that's a legacy, <laughs> but um, yeah, people. So, you know, only at the upper echelons often do people even bother to ask me if I'm mm. related, wow. you know, so um, it's it's nothing I lead with, you know, it, it right. didn't help at all, but it doesn't hurt. Right. And I, you know, and I'm just a, like I said, such a fan of his work. So. Absolutely. So, yeah, I didn't really have I, I started like most people do. Mm. Where do you get in? Right. Where what do you do? There wasn't anybody to say, here's an agent. Right. Here's here's what you do. There was no game plan. Wow. But and did you not get any experience with your um, your father, at least, you know, where they're the fancy directors or the actors coming in your home? Like, Did that experience? What was that like as a child like, and kind of living the entertainment family? Yeah, World. not so much. Oh, interesting. Um, <laughs> yeah, interesting. Um, I had a, call it Bronte esque. I had a very, um, I had a, a hard childhood. Mm. Um, 
Uh, my father, who just recently passed away, I hadn't spoken to him in years. He didn't raise me. He uh, had a really severe drinking problem. Mm. Uh, and my mother died when I was a year and a half old. So I went, my grandmother had moved to Mexico. Mm. And when she moved back to the United States, I moved in with her when I was eight and stayed wow. there. So there was no, it was just me and grandma in a wow. little house and that, <laughs> no Hollywood. Uh, that's amazing. Yeah. That's yeah. Am- I mean, because again, like you even mentioned, I'm sure most people would see the last name or think that, oh, because you're from Hollywood, California, you were born here, that you miraculously have this like advantage over anybody else. But that's not the case. And no. you've gotten to where you people are. People look at me and yeah. they or say all the time, oh, Hollywood royalty, Hollywood right. royalty. And it's like, oh, I feel like the, the pauper, not the, you know, it's not. Uh, and that's fine. Too. I mean, it made me who I am, you know. And for those, you know, I have a lot of clients who are, you know, mm. do have famous parents mm. and relatives. And there's no shame in that either in getting that leg up. If there's right. somebody who's there who's willing to help you. Right. I think that's lovely. Right. You know, they have their own battles to fight Absolutely. in terms of making their own way in the world and proving themselves. So, but yeah, so I kind of got the the worst of both worlds. People thought I had a leg up, and I had no leg up. <laughs> right. God, I mean, I I admire actors like that. I admire actors who had to kind of fight for their place. You know what I mean? Um, even if you had a foot in the door. I think the misconception is that even if you got a foot in, then that means the rest of your career is kind of laid out for you. But you still have to shove and get in front of people, even if you had that leg up. But it doesn't sound like that. And but ex- I worked hard. Yeah. And, and I was cute. <laughs> right. <laughs> that didn't hurt. 50 most beautiful people in the world. Yes, That's indeed. not an easy feat. That's amazing. Yeah, I should have that tattooed. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so um, but being able to watch your parents did, did you ever go to kind of like study your parents acting? W- was that ever a thing like, hey, let me try to watch their stuff and see if I can adopt some of those things in my own career, my own acting? I never saw any of my uh, mother's things until I was an adult okay. and already a working actor. Right. Um, I was, I, I didn't really, you know, wasn't really till like IMDb mm. came out that I mm. started going, oh, look what she's done because I had no connection to her. Her right. whole side of the family's deceased. Right. Um, my, I wasn't with my father. He didn't want to talk about her. Mm. So I knew nothing about her, really. And oh. then with my father, I'd seen uh, a couple of... I'd seen truly just one movie that he did. Mm. It was... Um, he's, you know, now that I look back on it, I'd have to watch it again. Mm. He might have been overacting a little, mm. you know? It was the time, though, maybe. It was, yeah. it was. He was um, in a... It was kind of cool, though, in an Elvis movie. Very cool. Right. The, the one movie where Elvis... <clears throat> excuse me doesn't sing <laughs> so <laughs> which i don't know if it's a good thing or, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah it was, it was kind of you know he gets killed at the end and i remember mm. that being a little upsetting for right. me right <laughs> oh my god wow yeah run over by a cannon oh my god <laughs> well, one of the most common ways to die right, in the 1940s absolutely. or in the 1960s <laughs> 70s whatever <laughs> um so let's go back you you were in ucla you're a young lady and you have doogie hauser sides in your hand <laughs> you have a manager who uh was it an agent and manager who got you that audition it was just your manager at the time it was you know what i realize now i think at that time was i just being hip pocketed I might have. Ha- I know I had an agent, but I'm not sure if if they had really bought into me at that point or not. And for those listening, what is hip pocketing? That's when a ma- an agent doesn't really want to sign you. They mm. send you out to see if uh, you stick. If you yeah, stick. If anything comes back, it's n- rarely good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, because you're uh, trying to fight and prove yourself. Right. But, but it can be. It Absolutely. Can be. At, le- at least they're trying something. Right. <laughs> And in that situation, you ended up booking the role on Doogie Howser. My first audition. Ever. I was going to ask. Yeah. That was your first thing. And that's like where the world discovered Neil Patrick Harris as well, yes, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> what was that like? Uh, as your first experience, let's talk on that first. And then I guess, did you work with Neil Patrick Harris? I did, but my scenes were more with Mitch. Okay. You okay. know, I got to kiss him. Oh. I mean, like I was flirting with him and kissed <laughs> him on the cheek kind of thing. Um, uh it was really fun. I, d- yeah. I, I was a girl and I had a cast on my leg. And mm. so they actually put a cast on my leg. Wow. And I didn't know anything about it. We shot on the lot. I mm. knew nothing. Yeah. I went to lunch. with. I don't think I had any money because 
I didn't realize I had to buy lunch at the commissary. Right. You know, and I hobbled over there on crutches because <laughs> I had a broken leg. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it was my God. very, very sad. I was a broke actor, you know, oh, just trying yeah. to like, you know, collect quarters to uh-huh. get my work done. And, yeah. <laughs> um, but there was a, a trailer with my name on it and um, and a, a credit. And I yeah. was in the Screen Actors Guild. And that episode was directed by uh, Kevin Hooks, okay. who was who was an actor who'd been on uh, The White Shadow wow. that I watched. And it was like, oh, my gosh. Oh, that's great. You know, and Stephen Bochco, I don't know if he did this with all of his shows, mm. but he would send out a letter saying, you know, you did a great job. And this is when your episode's going to air. And really felt like such a gracious time to be in the business absolutely i don't i mean and did you experience that later in your career also i mean because i've never gotten a letter i don't think except for the series regular role that i was on i got a letter from the producers and that was really great but every guest star co-star thing it's like all right thanks for your work kid and and see you later you know what i mean does that still happen it does okay that's amazing um well, I did the Rosie O'Donnell show years yes. ago, and she sent a handwritten thank you note, wow. and, she, and I thought that was so lovely. I did an episode of, um, it's interesting, you remember those. You remember yep. the people who sent you letters. Absolutely. Um, the Love Boat, the reboot of mm. The Love Boat, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, I'm blanking her name, Joan, uh, one of the actresses on okay. it sent me a note. Mm-hmm. And then I did an, uh, an audition uh, once for the actor and director, Bob Balaban, mm. And he sent me the most lovely audition because I killed that audition and I didn't get the part. Hmm. And he sent me a letter explaining why that happened and telling me about how amazing I was as an actor. And it was just something that I still cherish. I I can go home and I can find it for you. (laughs) Absolutely. Wow. That's amazing. And I think, so you ended up watching the episode and that must have been an exciting thing too to finally see yourself. I remember my first time watching myself on TV. What was it? um, It was Parenthood. Oh, but wow. my but I didn't have any lines. Uh-huh. I it was like literally co-star no lines. My trajectory was then co-star one line, then it was co-star three lines, and uh-huh. and slowly got to the guest star uh-huh. no lines, but then guest star lines. It then right. that's how my trajectory was. Um, but it's still such a special thing to finally see yourself. I mean, you've there's so many actors who who unfortunately don't get to work, and it's such a blessing um, to get that opportunity and. You were a young girl, you know what I mean. That's that's just so cool. I it think was that's very great. cool. I yeah. had also auditioned for um, an episode of Growing Pains. Yeah, wow. And um, uh, I didn't get the line, but I got one of the parts. But I remember that so clearly. I remember going in. It was a friend of a friend who got me the audition. I didn't have an agent then, and um, uh, I walked in, and there was tons of beautiful girls. Hmm. Everywhere with with headshots, and I think I'd had a friend take my headshot, and credits, and they were gorgeous, and they kept letting people go, and kept keeping a few of us, right. and they kept four of us, and I remember that being, you know, you know, yeah, Alan Thick and Kirk Cameron, and and everybody was so lovely, and right. it was like you know and I saw myself and and I got a credit even though I didn't speak in that one you know but it was do you you think that because you were new to the game and you hadn't gone on many experiences that kind of that fear of getting the role and you know me of booking the role and kind of being rejected it wasn't so ingrained in your sorry in your story or in your life just yet and you were kind of being just like thrown in the wind and you know what I mean like I, I think that I didn't know any better. Right. Well, actually, no, that's not true. I, I I knew how hard it was because of my parents. Right. And because So it was like, let's do it. Nice. You know, I, I didn't have expectations. Right. Right. It wasn't an expectation that I was going to get the part. Mm. It was an ex. What was surprising is how many other people were up for the part <laughs> and how intimidating so many of them are. Right. You know, I like to tell my students to, to not be intimidated by the other actors. Mm. They're you're competing against yourself, the yeah. best version of yourself, your take on that character. It's not competing with somebody else. Right. I don't think I necessarily could have um, uh, articulated that at mm. that point in my right, life, but right. I think I, it was just like, all right, let's try. It's, right. it, it's not a fair business. That is something that I did know then mm. and I know now. Right. It's not fair. I've got wonderfully talented actors that right. aren't working. And sometimes I see people that aren't the most dedicated and hardworking that are succeeding. Right. 
it's not fair. Right, absolutely. But life isn't. <laughs> no, you're so right. Do you, I mean, have you thought about, uh, I'm sure you have kind of thought about what is keeping those talented actors um, away from the roles that they sh- deserve. You know, I'm sure you see actors in your class doing work that is worthy of being on TV. I'm sure you work with amazing actors, but do you think they get in their own way when it comes down to game time? What do you think it is? Yeah, I think they get, well, there's, one is opportunity. Mm. You know, uh, all of my, so many of my actors don't even have an agent, you know, and they really want that representation and getting that representation when you don't have credits, that whole catch 22. Mm. So sometimes they're just not getting the opportunities. And, um, Sometimes they're not trusting themselves. Mm-hmm. They'll uh, they'll try to give them what they think that they want, rather than really being the artist to do what it is that they want to trust themselves. Um, I I tell my actors all the time that if they know, if you're anywhere near what it is that they're looking for, they will direct you to what it is that they want. Mm-hmm. So this is your chance to have the role, own the role, and do what you want. Mm-hmm create your art right to say this is this is my take on it and if you weren't right for it who cares at least you did what you wanted and if you are right for it and it says you know she sheds a single tear then you know then you can and then they go that was great can you cry they'll never say that but anyway then you'll get another chance you do it more emotionally okay Right. You can have another chance to do that. They'll direct you if, if you're what they want and right. they want something specific from you. Absolutely. Um, did you find that that was kind of your case in when you got um, cast in SWAT? Oh. What was that like? SWAT was so much fun. Yeah. SWAT, I auditioned, and I, that was like, I booked two roles in that same day. It was one of those wow. old days when you'd have like, you know, change in your car. I you have so many auditions. Wow. Um, uh, but I went in and I auditioned for one role. Okay. And I did a great job. And she looks at me and she said, um, that was really nice. You know, we have another role. Can we do an improv? <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> so I got, and, and it was uh, to be sort of bitchy. And, and I don't know if she used that word exactly. But, um, and I stopped. I think it was at that point, too, that it wasn't all about everybody liking me. Mm. <laughs> So I got to really join the consciousness of this character, <laughs> right? And do this improv, and it was great improv. And then I left, and I didn't hear back. And God, like, that can be so freeing and when you get to play a character like that. Right, and it was literally, right. I think, two to three months later Wow. that they called and booked me. Wow. I was like, wait, what? Because, you know, there's so many times that you know you did a good job, but yeah. who knows? The character originally had been written about 20 years, 30 years older than me. Right. So... You know, I didn't know that at right. the time, but you know, they I, they were changing a character, so I I that was great fun. And how much fun was that set? Right. Oh my goodness! I could imagine. I could imagine. <laughs> it's one of my favorite movies. It's so action packed. There's so much going on in that, and you got great stars. Kind of, I mean, with Colin Farrell and and uh, you know uh, Michelle Rodriguez, so many actors who kind of were like on the blip of the radar, and then that movie, I think, really catapulted a lot yeah. of careers. It's a LL sick movie. Cool J. LL, yeah. I mean, there's so many people yeah. that were, that That's were so cool. uh, um, uh, Josh Charles. I mean, it was a really, really great cast. Oh, Olivier amazing. Martinez. He wow. shoves me in the face. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Samuel L. Jackson. And I got to work with all of them. That's amazing. really fun. Was there anything that you picked up from any of the actors that stands out and you were like, ooh, I'm going to use that? Anybody, anything about anyone's that you remember their process before they walked into the screen maybe? Well, nobody, you know, I was a hostage, so I sort of had my own work that I was doing, right. you know. Um, I just remember everybody was very professional. Mm. Um, they showed up ready to work. They showed up when they were supposed to. Um, uh, uh, LL was just, you know, sitting off, reading his books, focused, mm. do, you know, when it came time to, you know, it was, it was very collaborative. Mm. They would work together in right. terms of, uh, you know, making sure that something would work to help somebody out. Right. Um, the director was wonderful. Clark Johnson was mm. really, uh, 
very special guy. Wow. I really enjoyed working with him. That whole set was really, really fun. That's amazing. And did Clark work with you? I mean, what was your process to play a hostage? Did you kind of get into that role in a specific way, or did you just let what happened that day kind of inform your performance? Or what's your method going in? Um, yeah, being in the moment, but also right. setting up an emotional memory, mm. you know, in terms of uh, fear mm. and, uh, phys- you know, safety. Right. I, I mean, you know... Um, uh, Olivia, uh, his idea of shoving me in the face, mm. you know, for me, it was hard not to anticipate it. Right. <laughs> you right. know, uh-huh. you know, like, yeah. just, you know, like he's so hot. Can you just <laughs> kiss me? You know, he's going to shove me in the face. That's not, <laughs> that's a bummer. Um, <laughs> you know, and, um, I'd watched a lot of people's movies before going into it as well. Cool. Cause it's, you know, there are so many people that oftentimes you don't have a chance to say, you know, you were wonderful in this movie. Right. And I want to let you know that the smaller movies that maybe some people haven't seen. Right. Um, that was fun to be able to talk with some of the actors about some of those parts. That's wonderful. Those roles. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. And in your career, you've also done um, some soaps as well, right? Mm-hmm. Days of Our Lives. Yes, yes. And so that's super exciting. And what I hear all the time is that, you know, a lot of actors, I think, the ones that consider themselves the serious actors might give soap operas the bad rap. You know what I mean? There is that bad rap around soaps. But I have heard from people on soaps that it's it's not easy. Could you I mean, can you talk about the day to day life of being on a soap opera? Absolutely. Yeah. I think I think the reason soap operas get a bad rap is well, they're soapy. They're a little tend to be a little campy. Mm. Um, th- they work quickly. So you don't really have the time that you're going to have to get sort of these more nuanced performances. There's things that the audience expects Mm. um, that you need to give them. But you're a working actor. There is nothing better than driving on to set, (laughs) driving on to a lot, and having a regular job as an actor. It's a gift. It really is. Um, Again, the, the, the work isn't... It's designed so that you just sort of have to memorize. The, and there was wonderful work happening on soaps. Absolutely. But sometimes you need to get there, get there fast, dirty, move on. Right. You know, there's not a, you know, let's shoot it again till right. we get it nuanced. Because there's another episode tomorrow. Right. And could you imagine if they shot a movie a day? Right. You know, which is, it's a half a movie a day for some of these. Jeez. Um, so what I hear you saying is that, I mean, part of that whole process is the letting go. Mm-hmm. It is not, and, and it seems like the whole crew is is of that mindset. You know what I mean? We shoot what we can. We hope that we're getting great work, but you have to move on. And I think that's an important lesson in life too. You know what I mean? You can't replay the audition in your head because it's not going to help, you know? I, I, I'm good friends with uh, Stacy Greason, who is very famously uh, Isabella on uh, Days of Our Lives. Ah. And she's just a, a wonderful person. And uh, we went to go see Soap Dish. I don't uh-huh. know if you remember that movie, right, as it came out. And we were both on the soap, and it, we laughed our asses <laughs> off. <laughs> there was just so much love for soaps in yeah. that and so much truth. Mm. I mean, it's, you know, it's it's the best job right. in terms of, you know, it might not be creatively fulfilling mm. sometimes, but... Um, but sometimes, you know, your day job's not creatively fulfilling. Right. And it's really fun to get to work with, with people who care about what it is that they do. Yeah, absolutely. You, even if it's fun, even if it's, you know. Yeah. I, I was young, and so I got to, you know, my character lost her virginity, and, you <laughs> know, with, an I think, an ice sculpture. And <laughs> <laughs> oh God. I mean, in the no, the, the, well, I think I think that's when we started flirting, and oh. I mean, just all of these things that kind of make me cringe now. But it's very <laughs> funny in the moment. I actually there, um, when I did Passions, I was filling in for an actress who was sick and couldn't do the role for mm. a while, and so I actually was my first scene. I was holding a baseball bat mm-hmm. in the air, and I had to wait while they said, "Today." The role of Sheridan Crane will be played by Shannon Sturgis. So I had to wait for that before I was like, Daddy. Uh, I, was <laughs> like, I was like, I got to experience that. Yeah. That's awesome. Wow. And it's so nice when my students audition for soaps. Mm. I can tell them what it's like. Yeah. I can, and I can, you know, because sometimes they'll say, well, I don't know if I want to do it. I'm like, yeah, you want to do it. Do yeah. you know, I mean, most of the actors that are the huge movie stars just didn't book their soaps. Right. Yeah, that's a very good point. You know, yeah. I mean... Yeah, <laughs> that's so great. And so 
you've had such an extensive career um and i'm sure like our listener you know there have been ups and downs can you recall any down times in in i love that you laughed you're like yeah i can list right. them all right away i mean Why was there... they like me i'm never what am i doing right crying. and i tell my students yeah. that i'm like there's going to be the times when you're going to come to me and cry yeah. i've got an actress right now series regular on a on a show uh just has a bunch of so i'm going to coach her later today for a movie audition um and i remember when she came to me crying you know it was it can beat you down. Sometimes you just need to surrender. It's not, of course it's about booking the part because otherwise you're not making any money and you're not feeling like a success. But that's why certainly with my students that are in class, you can be working on your art form. You know, there's a difference between, you know, Picasso isn't going to be, or Van Gogh, Picasso's the wrong example, uh, Van Gogh, uh, you know, how many paintings did he sell? Was right. he a successful painter? Mm. Your artistry is your artistry. Right. You can't, you, you need to make a living. You need to understand, but sometimes you need to surrender. Mm. You need to let go. Mm. You know, I think in those down times though, is when we stop taking chances. When we start going, okay, this is the audition because now my agents are going to drop me if I don't do well and I got it. And then, that just shuts down the creative process. Mm. Then you're you're turning in, and I'm sure I did, auditions that were mediocre. Right. Because you're so worried you're going to do something bad mm. that you can't do anything great. <laughs> you're so worried to fail that there's no room for genius. Well said. <laughs> that was so powerful. Um, that's something that I constantly battle, the down times. There is so much downtime, um, and it's that unknown that I've started to understand that that is where the creativity li like lies. That is when you get ingenious about some stuff, you know what I mean? And um, in my career lately, I feel like that's where I'm at lately with the podcast and the writing mm -hmm. and writing scripts and acting classes and all that good stuff that I think actors forget that there is opportunity to stay creative um, and artistically fulfilled during the downtime. And it only makes you a better actor. Yeah, that's great too. <laughs> right? Yeah. Now if you're going to play a DJ or right. you play somebody who you, you know, you, you have a, a, an understanding of how to use the, your mm. mics and your equipment. Right. And you've got a truth that you're going to bring to it. Right. And that's you're great. only getting better. Right, absolutely. You know, it opens up new things. Right. I did have a wonderful uh, writer, actor, uh, executive producer friend who said to me though, um, when you write don't write for yourself <laughs> why because then sometimes the character is not able to develop like they would naturally hmm. you're trying to jam yourself into that very and it's not you know yeah. hopefully at the end you've got a part for you yeah. <laughs> hopefully yeah you right. know and he's insanely successful right wow. now but not as an actor as an executive producer of a very very interesting very successful show right right um so were you kind of in a break time i want to talk about how you met aaron spicer uh -huh. um aaron is a really well-known um acting coach and acting teacher as well in los angeles he's coached um gerard butler and will smith and many others uh -huh. um and were you kind of you were in class, right? Was that the downtime between gigs or? No, no, I was in, was that? Um, I was in college. It was oh, okay. when I was beginning and he saw me uh, acting my little heart out, you know, <laughs> not quite knowing what I was doing, but really, you know, he saw what I see sometimes in people, which is you can have a career. Mm. There's something there. You've got the talent, the look, the, the this could happen mm. for you. And uh, I was actually living in Ventura then. Um, or right after that, and uh, uh, so I would commute to Hollywood for classes, and um, that's and like an hour, yes, or more, <laughs> yes, yeah. Because yes, I was considering way, yeah. Ventura, and it's like, yeah. oh, but it's so far from auditions. Really uh, traffic was a little better back in those <laughs> oh, days. God, I'll, I I'll wish. give you that. <laughs> um, yeah, I have students who commute from Santa Barbara. Wow, San Diego, dedication. I'm like, wow. I I've yeah. had I've had students commute for classes from Austin, Texas, from Tennessee, and I think I have somebody right now commuting from Philadelphia. That's incredible. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm like, 
I mean, they'll, they'll to try to that. Yeah. put some business or, you know, do it over a weekend right. or, you know. That's so respectable. They've got the, it's really something. Yeah. But I was not able to, <laughs> <laughs> I, I could just afford the gas to get there. Right, back. right, right. Um, so that's when I started working with Aaron and he was not the coach to the stars then. Mm. We had a little dinky theater and he had, I don't know, maybe three classes a week. Mm. And, but I loved what he taught. It resonated with me. Um, and I never went anywhere else. Mm. <laughs> I just every I'd start working and then I would come back to, you know, when I was between classes and, or between roles and between jobs and I'd come back and he kept moving on up, <laughs> getting yeah. better studios, getting more students. Um, you know, Jennifer Lopez was in class with us. Wow. We did scenes together. She was uh, uh she was Stella to my Blanche in uh-huh. Streetcar. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Um, a ha- such a hard worker. Yeah. I mean, she really, really, people say, well, how do you, I'm like, she worked so hard, and, so dedicated. And, and are you talking when, because w- that's so interesting mm-hmm. you say that, because or, or, I want to unpack that a little bit. Hard working, in your opinion, was it that she was like, how was she so hard working if you could take a gander from what you saw? Well, first showing up to class. Okay, right, right. That's super important. <laughs> right. Doing her work, yeah. not uh, really uh, her dancing. She was mm-hmm. a dancer then um, and really focused. Yeah. You know, she knew what she wanted. She wasn't sure exactly how to get there. Right. But she had her dream and she worked for it. Right. And she, uh, you know, she, she, she was, I do believe, hip pocketed at the beginning and she was, you know, she was like, oh, I'm leaving them as soon as I, you know, get somebody better because right. they didn't believe in me. Right. So she believed in herself. That's you know? very And there important. wasn't people who looked like her necessarily right. at the beginning. Right. You know, she had to sort of create her own niche. And right. Damn, did she, you know? <laughs> right. And, but heart, but... You know, you show up to work with her, and she's prepared. Mm. <laughs> it's not like, I don't know what my line is. Let me, ha-, you know, no. She knows what she's doing. Hmm. You know, she works very hard. She still, you know, uses our... Yeah, shout know, out J-Lo, still yeah. doing all that. I mean, the both of you, though, because then, you know, now we see that you and Aaron created a, had a collaboration. I mean, I think he yes. saw something in you that... Um, he knew that you had this acting, teaching ability, and not every actor can be an acting coach. True. It's just what it is. You can be a great actor, but I don't think everyone can translate what they're going through, their process, and um, influence or impart that wisdom on another actor to get them to the next level. So clearly he saw that in you. Right. He first asked me to teach probably in my late 20s, and I really wasn't ready uh, for a couple of reasons. One, um, I think I was almost too young to be taken seriously by the other students. Mm. <laughs> and I was too cute at that time, you know. It was <laughs> like, mm, what does she know, you know. Um, and then um, when I was still acting, I just, for me, um, I didn't feel that it was right or appropriate for me to be teaching and still acting or still in class. So you no longer act now as you're... Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I'm just a... Um, uh, just a teacher. Oh, that's great. That's great. <laughs> um, I mean, I do. I, I, I'm, I, I act with my students. Right, I, right. Uh, I get up there. I put on a show. I'm very entertaining <laughs> when you come to my class. <laughs> um, I can demonstrate like nobody's business. But Shed um, the single tear. <laughs> right. Like a pro. <laughs> Which I. Yeah. Um, but, um, but it just, it, it seems that if I'm coaching you for something and then I'm signing in on the sign-in sheet right after you, can't help but erode your confidence in me a little mm, bit <laughs> right yeah. um you know uh where are my loyalties if i coach i uh, you know an actress my age for something that i'm right for i don't mm. want to be thinking i should be going out on this this is a good role you know mm. and i do i read these roles sometimes i'm that's a good role but that's a good role for you yeah i'm gonna see what i can do to make it your role mm. um that said, I mean, if somebody wanted to offer me the most beautiful role in the world, I'm not going to be ridiculous, you know. So <laughs> but, sorry, but I'm, I'm teaching on Tuesday right, night. Right, I can't right. do it. <laughs> but um, but really for me, I wasn't ready. Also in class, just like I was saying in auditions, you need to be willing to fail. Hmm. You need to get up there and risk being terrible. And I don't think I'd seen other acting teachers that were in class 
and they were terrible. <laughs> and even I understood that like, well, that doesn't mean that they can't teach, but I, it, it, it taints it. You right. know, I don't want to watch my, my teacher fail. I right. don't want to watch them be bad. So gotcha. I just, I thought, you know, when I was ready to teach, I was ready to give up the rest and mm. just throw myself into my students. That's, I think that's beautiful. I it, love it. It's I beautiful to get back. Ever. Yeah. Second best job. <laughs> I have the best job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, seriously, you have a job right I can now. He- yeah. hit craft service. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, um, I want to go into the acting class conversation. Now you've been teaching at Spicer Sturges mm-hmm. for how long now? Um, well, it's my studio. I bought it That's three right. years ago. That's so, right. Congratulations. Four years ago? Yeah. Congrats. That's Thank so you. great. Yeah. So it's it's it really teaching for a couple of years right. before that. Okay. And That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Um and what is the style of your acting class? Is it on camera or do you guys offer that or is it just stage scene work? Just um well, let me explain. Yeah. Uh, it's not on camera. Mm-hmm. Um every once in a while I might have a student who wants to film it for whatever reason and that's absolutely acceptable. But I don't think um, we're really in the business of teaching you how to act Mm. and allowing you to be an artist and a place to grow and flourish. Ideally, the beginning actor learns how to act and the experienced actor has a place like a gym that they can come and work out and then go off and shoot a movie and then come back and try something else. Oh, I'm doing nothing but playing young innocence. Now I want to work on, you know, being a, a tough guy, being, right. being intimidating, or I want to work on my sex, you know, whatever it is that you want to work on mm-hmm. in terms of bettering yourself and making yourself a more versatile actor. So we have uh, technique classes. We're Stanislavski based. Mm. Um, we're not dogmatic, you know. Uh, we know what will work, but... I don't know what's going on in your head. I just see results. So I'm going to talk to you about how do we get a more truthful result. We're looking for truth. I'm not looking to see anybody act. Mm. I'm looking to be like, oh my gosh. You know, when people, I'm sure you've experienced this when you've been in class, when people forget their lines, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Right? Because even in that moment, they come to life. Oh yeah. You're like, (laughs) right? It's not waiting for somebody out, waiting to say your line. You're truly listening. Right. You're in that moment. Those are the actor highs. Right. Right. When you come out the other end and you're like, I don't know what just happened. Yeah. I think it was good. <laughs> the flow, the just the being. Right. right. I was working, uh, I was teaching last night and um, so I'm really glad we're not on camera because we went out after class. <laughs> I got home very late. I tried. I couldn't do it on my <laughs> own. It's, this is much better. <laughs> yes, I'm very happy for that. <laughs> um, uh, but this actress you know, she did her first take of a monologue and it was all right. And uh, then she did her second take and I was like, did you like that better? It was much better. And she goes, yes, I felt kind of fuzzy in the head. (laughs) And and that was her way. I thought that was an interest. I'd never heard anybody say that before of not being in her head. Yeah. Like that wasn't, you know, there's n- there that's the, and that's where the actor, the character was right within that, you know, she was not, it's one of these things where she's just talking and then she realizes what she's been saying. Right. You know, and then changes the subject. <laughs> yeah. And I think that there's two parts to that. It's trusting yourself that you know the lines, you know what has to happen mm-hmm. next, and just coming from your heart, not your brain, and really just putting it out there, but also trusting you as the acting teacher to allow her to get to that place because – I mean, there there has to be a nervousness for acting students to go up in front of an audience and in front. The, you built trust in the room right. um, for her to get to that vulnerable state, right. and then it was and then it it was better, and then it was better. I think that's amazing. Um, what we teach at Pfizer Sturgis, we we work towards one thing that's a little different is we work towards film and television. Mm-hmm. So even though we have a lot of scenes that people will do from plays because it's wonderful to get a you know it's wonderful material, easy to get a hold of. We don't worry about projecting to the back wall. Mm. We don't worry about blocking it. Mm. We don't, uh, you screw up, take two. Mm. And we call it take two, right? You just do another take. It's not theater, right? Yeah. Because theater, you're going to have m- weeks of rehearsal. Right. You don't just, right? We don't have you rehearse with your scene partner outside of class. Oh. Because, as I like to say, if you're going to do an episode of NCIS LA, you don't go to LL Cool J's house and run lines all weekend long. Oh, man, really? He'll call the cops on you. <laughs> <laughs> you got to uh, stay at home. Yeah. Prepare yourself fully. Yes. Show up to set ready to work. Yes. If you get a rehearsal, fabulous. If you don't, 
No, that's you're fantastic. Ready. Yeah. So it's really much easier on your time, but also more applicable to how it is when you're going to work. Right. Because then people will go to set and they'll be like, I don't know. How, right. Then they'll go back to bad habits. Right. Because they haven't had this type of training. Great. Yeah. Right. So I love how we teach. So we have beginners and uh, experienced working actors. It's the most fun. And I have a question. Um, so it sounds like the class is really like that workout. You know what I mean? It really gives you an opportunity to, like you mentioned, go film your TV show, go film your uh, movie, and then come on back. Do you suggest that actors take a acting class once a year, once a month? Do they stay in a full year? Like, What's your school of thought on acting class frequency in general? That's a really good question. I haven't really thought about that. Mm. I mean, I think, uh, I think, well, you know, of course, the business side of me says stay in class, right. pay your tuition every month, <laughs> <laughs> never stop. <laughs> um, but sometimes you need to go off and do something else. Sometimes you, you, you might want to take your tuition and take a dance class, take a mm -hmm. painting class, um, travel, mm -hmm. experience something. But I think there's always something to be learned. I think it's fun. I think it's a more interesting way of spending your evening than going to a movie, you yeah. know, uh, watching television. Because right. you can do that another night. Right. You know, you, I, I find that oftentimes actors might learn more on a night when they're not putting up a scene. Mm. When they're just able to sit and watch and be a sponge and listen. I encourage uh, my students to be uh, teachers in their seats. Not, not to offer anything up because right. you're too vulnerable to the actors when they're up there but understand like why is that not working how is it a problem with their character is it a problem with their objective are they not listening you mm. know so I, I you know that's a really interesting question because one of the things that we offer our students is they can come to all of our regular session classes for their wow. tuition so you can be there 11 classes a week, wow. seven days a week. Wow, because most classes are, you're restricted to your time period. Right. I've been to classes where you can't show up to other, yeah, um, no, other sessions. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. It's wonderful. Right. You know, and then we understand that, you know, rare is the person who can be there, you know. Right. Those are usually our, our students who come for just a month who are international right. or studying from somewhere else who don't have anything right. else to do, <laughs> right. you know, and people will say, can I study somewhere else right. while I'm studying there? And I'm, of course I don't, you know, I, I would be too cheap, mm -hmm. too frugal to ever give somebody else money if I could be here seven days a week, but you do what you got to right. do. You're yeah. Right. You know, that's amazing. And that means, I mean, it just goes to show again that Spizer Sturgis has created a community that even if a stranger to you comes into your class, you still feel open enough to present to the audience. And you built that into your students. I think anyone listening in the LA area, I've audited the class as well, and I really enjoyed um, Aaron's talk in the beginning. Um, I loved what I saw on the on the set, but I actually ended up going to work right after, uh -huh. and and so I think what ha I just got like jumbled on, and I didn't jump into the class right away. But um, I have a good friend who um, studied with Aaron for I want to say six months or a year, and his acting because. He's someone that was a, um, he was an economics major, or I might be butchering that, he might be an engineer major. I think I know who you're talking about. Yes, yeah, <laughs> yes, and um, and anyway, he, you know, I've seen him really grow, and I think when he was part of your guys' studio, he made a huge leap um, in his acting ability, in his confidence in himself, and I think that matters, like you were talking about, um, all the inside stuff, you know what I mean, as well as the technique as well, um, yeah. I, I think I think he was somebody who did a whole. Uh, he worked a lot on Master of None, maybe. As, mm -hmm. Yes, class. yes, you yes, know yes, Ronak. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, there he is. He's wonderful. He's yeah. wonderful. But yeah. watching his growth was really wonderful. Yeah, you know, we. I really proud. I'm really proud that our studio is so diverse. There's not going to be a language that you don't hear that somebody has spoken at our studio. The mm -hmm. most diverse and inclusive. Everybody feels it's really such a welcoming place, no matter who you are and where you come from. Right. You know, every once in a while we might have somebody who really English is not their first language, and that sometimes is a little difficult. But um, other, you know, certainly in beginning classes and technique, then speak in your language. Right. We can. Uh, I, my job is watching behavior. Right. That's what I'm watching. And making <laughs> sure it's truthful. Making sure it's truthful. Right. That's your only job. Your yeah. job. You know, I. I regularly have to remind them because it's 
everybody has a different opinion on what acting is, but that your job is not to entertain. You know, people try to make things funny or they try to, but your job is not to entertain. Your job is truthful behavior. Is mm-hmm. your, if your character is insecure and is trying to make everybody happy and trying to entertain everybody, then that is a character issue. And then right. that's, uh, you know, you're creating that truth. But let the editor, let the director, let the sound design, and let everybody else do their job too. I'm really taking all that in. That's uh, amazing. It's so important to hear at any level of your experience. Um, and that actually brings me to a good point. Why would a well-known actor like Gerard Butler or Will Smith, why, I, I think I know the answer, but why would they need an acting coach? Because to the average audience member or viewer, even a young actor, they've made it. They know everything there is to know. Why would they need an acting coach? Why does Serena need a tennis coach? <laughs> right. Right? Why? Um, and yes, all of those actors, they could do it without us. Mm. There's n- not, not, but they don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> they want to have, and ultimately, you know, they make the decisions. They know, but it's just another voice. When, I, when I'm on set, I'll remind an actor, I'll say, you know, if you look around, look at all of the people you have for wardrobe all the people you have for the lights, all the people for the camera, all the people for the editing. Who's there just for the actor, mm. right? The director has got so much on his or her plate, mm. right? There is, you know, they're going to trust that you know what you're doing. We're able to come in there and say, you know, remember, you know, you haven't seen your daughter for six months. Mm. <laughs> right. You know, remember, you know, don't forget, you know, right before this you got that terrible news Mm. little reminders little things to help you know clarify some things because being on set and especially i'm sure will a will smith let's say he's got such a big personality and i'm sure he goes through so much other stuff being on set that he may may forget those things like you're mentioning well it's easy to get distracted too with everything else you know you got to promote your next film you got to do this but he is such a perfectionist you know and so it just helps to have another, you know, is, is I think, you know, I, we, of course, discourage uh, actors rehearsing alone together, mm. right? Because part of what ends up happening a lot of times is you'll end up directing each other, mm. which is really not good. But there is that part of where you want to talk about it. Yeah. Right? That's why I think acting class is so much fun. What we're doing right now this week in our technique classes is we're doing our character breakdown exercise, and then next week we're doing our scene breakdown. And it's so much fun to discuss this stuff, to yeah. say, oh, um, right, if I make this choice, this is the route that I'm taking this character down. And if I take this one, that's the one. And just to be able to have somebody else to bounce those ideas off of and get excited about it and and go, okay, you know, and to feel more confident in your own choices. Right. Right. Yeah. So... In your acting teaching, have you learned any lessons about acting that if you were still doing it, you know what I mean, like you would apply to your acting, you know what I mean, like or or now that you see these young guys or young students doing it, you're like, oh my God, if I could only tell you. Oh, so many. <laughs> Where to begin? Where to begin? <laughs> um, we've got a limited time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> to really let go. Yeah. To really allow yourself to quote unquote fail. You know, it's not failure, but failure, but to, when you try to control it, that's not truthful behavior. When you're trying, when you're judging your lines and your things and you really need to let go. Mm. It's, it's so important. And I, I really get it for, um, for my women, um, understanding, uh, how beautiful they are and the power of that, um, that's something uh, that you know ev- everybody's so insecure and to really understand what it is that you have and, and own it and it doesn't make you uh, a bad person you know a lot of uh, I have a, uh, one student who's she's just doing the most amazing work right now but it's been six months to a year of me telling her in every scene stop being so nice why are you so nice why are you so nice because she's trying to please she's smiling she's you know it's like no stop it <laughs> it's not, it's good for your life too. Right. <laughs> you know, there's so much for for um, men. A lot of times when they uh, need to be intimidating, you know, they raise their voice, they yell. You know, truly 
tough and intimidating, then there's not much that they have to do. Yeah. But trusting it. So, by the way, all three of those things <laughs> come down to trusting, mm. to really trusting. And I understand, you know, especially you're 19, 25, you know, y- y- every opportunity you think is your last. Then put, your, put it into me, into my other teachers, into Aaron, into Andrani. Trust us that we're not going to let you fail. That we'll be your uh, your your net, mm. and and even if you do fail, <laughs> it's not brain surgery. Nobody dies. Right, right, right. They won't even remember. You know. Yeah. Uh, sometimes failures are wonderful. I love watching um, audition tapes from people. You know, not you know, especially ones who've booked the role, because you go, oh, that's right. Oh, they looked at their sides. They forgot their line. They were, it's, right? You're right. so worried about being perfect all the time, about having everybody like you. That's not your job. Your job is truth. <laughs> so powerful. <laughs> so powerful. We're going to start ra- uh, wrapping up. We're going to work to wrap oh, so up soon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a great time. Um, is I have a, I'm so curious. Is there anything else that you want to achieve in life or in acting or acting teaching like what else is there um on the horizon for shannon sturges well that's great that's (laughs) a great question um the first thing that i thought of when you when you said that is um you know I'll, i'll go to my little egoistic places as well i would love for one of my students to win a major award and thank me. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Because not just the thanking me. I mean, first and foremost, I would love for that to happen Mm -hmm. for them because I know that they would thank me in their hearts even if it doesn't happen on on stage. I love to see people achieve their dreams. That's exciting for me. Um, It's exciting for me. I get wonderful letters from people that I've changed their lives even if they're not acting anymore. I mean, I have doctors, lawyers, literally doctors, lawyers, rocket scientists who come to my class who just, they have a creative side that they want to explore, right? And why not? Mm, yeah. <laughs> it's so exciting for me. Yeah. But I, I uh, you know, I love, uh, I love my studio. Um, I think we're about as big as I want to be, but, you know, wait till, you know, everybody's like, bring it, bring it. You know, by coastal, to Atlanta, yeah, or exactly, right, or New to York, Toronto, yeah, Toronto. Right. that'd be great. Um, uh, I find that I think most people, you know, New York is such a great theater town. Mm. You know, I think you'd want to focus on theater sure. if you're out there, but maybe not. Right, you know, yeah, it's growing there too. The film industry, <laughs> right, as well. right, right. So uh, yeah. that's amazing. And then uh, for a little actor homework out there, so we can leave these listeners uh-huh. with something to do. Um, do you have a a a favorite acting book or are there any actors or actresses that you really admire um, who are either coming up in the game right now who are already established that you think um, it would behoove our listener to watch and study to get to that truth that you're talking about? I mean, I'm sure there's a big list, but anyone that speaks to you. I'm not thinking of anybody up and coming necessarily. I mean, you know, I love the the, the, f- the actors that are so free, yeah. you know, um, Jennifer Lawrence and Sam Rockwell oh, and yeah. Denzel yeah. and um, uh, Denzel's son, John David. He's you great know, too, all, I know. You know, um, there's wonderful work happening out there. And then later I'm going to go home and I'm going to be like, how did I not <laughs> mention this person or that person or, you know. Uh, well, I'll add it in the show notes <laughs> if I do get that text. A- any of those uh, yeah. wonderful actors that I've had the pleasure to work with. Yeah, or, right. Um, and we give our actors a copy of Uta Hagen's Respect for Acting. Um You know, it's it's theater-based, yeah. but it, it, it ground ground brings you back to the truth yeah um because and what then what i like to say to people um is you're already a perfect actor Hmm. in your real life you create truth all the time right the trick is is now being in this imaginary world in the of the script and then to do what you already do you know the questions that people will ask me you know sometimes like what do i do with my hands I'm like, when in your real life do you ever think, I don't know what to do with my hands? Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. All of you, remember that you live a perfectly truthful life. Right. Every time except for when you're, you know, auditioning or in front of the camera. And hopefully you can relax and allow it to happen there too. So. 
Oh, love it. Um, what do you love about working with actors? Is there one thing that you admire working with actors? Oh, I love their vulnerability. I love um, the risk that they take. You know, I say um, a lot of times you'll meet people who, in you, a lot of actors are afraid to say that they're actors. Mm -hmm. There's shame about that, which is so sad, but I understand that. Because th sometimes there's people that are assholes, <laughs> <laughs> right? So you say, I'm an actor. And then somebody will say, oh, well, what restaurant do you work at, <sighs> right? Or they'll say something like that. And, and what I want to remind actors is to realize that it's not, that's not about you. That's about them. They have their unrealized dreams. And when you're pursuing your dreams, you're a threat to the other person. Because what if they did it? They've told themselves a story, whether it's acting, music, dance, whatever it is, that they can't do it. It's, it's not going to happen for them. So if it happens for you, it threatens their story that they've told themselves. So it has nothing to do with you. You know, you, you can call them out on their shit or you can just say, you know, oh, I, you know. Yeah, you know, I I, I, I work at Panera. Yeah. You know, and but then don't come because I will spit in your food <laughs> or something. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's so. Uh, but well it's said, true. Yeah. The, everybody's got a dream, yeah. and you, there should be no shame in pursuing your dream. It's it's wonderful. And again, like I said, I have some students who have decided that that they're not going to make a living from this, hmm. but they still want to practice the art form. They love something else. And who knows what comes up. Right. Doing community theater is wonderful. Shooting a movie with your friends is fabulous. Mm -hmm. Yes, do I watch the award shows and think, you know, my student could have done that, you right. know. But I'm happy for that actor who right. did that. Right. I'm, you know, I'm so happy when, when I I the award shows are such a funny thing anyways because how do, <laughs> Why? You, com how do you compare performances yeah. Right. Yeah. How, how do you say that that one performance is better than another? Like, right. Is the degree of difficulty different? Right. Right. Is right. There, right. Are they closer to themselves so they get more points? It's, but but I do love that people celebrate and honor the arts. Yeah. Absolutely. You know that's wonderful. Yeah. You know I go to see plays when I can. I go to see movies. I just I love actors. Yeah. They're they're the most wonderful and exciting people. Isn't that who everybody wants to talk to at a dinner party? Yeah, that is very true. <laughs> I just want to eat my dinner. <laughs> yeah, but no, that's so right, true. Right, everybody wants to talk, right? You know, <laughs> and nobody's going like, oh, you <laughs> do injection molding of plastic. Yeah, okay, so anyway. But, and that gives us the great opportunity with talking to people. It is a noble profession. I mean, you were you are doing a service. You, you don't know whose life you were changing or touching, and it, you're so right. Right, you we have you, to remember that. You could... Um, um, we move each other, right? We, uh, you know, you watch a movie like Moonlight, oh, right? And it, it, you don't have to be a gay person of color to understand the human condition, <laughs> right? That these movies, these the, or, or just to laugh, Tropic Thunder, and you, <laughs> you know, have a great. I mean, it's a wonderful thing that we do to en that ultimately becomes entertaining, but also uplifts. Yeah, and. and to even be a small part of that is a really wonderful thing. Yes, yeah. it's, it's it's really fabulous. And then for you to experience that, you know, I've I've had people in my classes move me. Wow! And I think everybody wants to be seen on some level. They want people to understand. Th they want their their pain mm. to be put to some kind of use, mm -hmm. to not be for nothing, even if it's to have other people recognize that I had that too. Mm. You yeah. know, we're all we all struggle, you know, whether, you know, you, whoever you are. Wow. Yeah. Oh, Shannon, is there anything else? I'm so happy to have you. Oh, good. Oh, God. <laughs> it has been a pleasure. Is there anything else you'd like to add to the listener out there? Um, one last parting piece of advice or? Love what you do. What, you know, uh, pursue your passions, your dreams. Don't uh, let that little critical voice in your head stop you from doing something that tells you you're not good enough um it doesn't serve you in any way yeah it doesn't so follow your dreams whatever they are in a, in a responsible fashion <laughs> right in yeah. a responsible fashion but why not as far as we know we get one trip yeah. <laughs> on this earth Amen. why not do what you want to do right 
Oh, wonderful. Um, where can our listeners find more about you and about the um, studio as well? Spizersturgis.com. We're on La Cienega. And, uh, and, and for people who might be listening from far away, we do Skype coaching as well. Oh, no and way. Okay, that's oh, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I've, I've coached people in Ireland and China and wow. all over the world, the Netherlands. It's really and they can find that info on SpizerSturgis.com? Yeah, I actually coached a Amazing. couple of, uh, I have some clients from Winnipeg, <laughs> and I coached them, and they both book jobs, you know, from Winnipeg and... <laughs> Wow. Yeah, now they're living out here. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, God. Shannon, thank you so much. Shannon Sturgis, uh, it has been a blessing to have you. You're beautiful, lovely. Thank you so thank much you for so adding much. all this value to our, our episode today. Thank you. Thank you for being here. So that's my talk with Shannon Sturges. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. Her talk reminded me to remember that our job as actors is to tell the truth, the truth of our human experience. Not to get people to like us, e even though we can get caught up in that sometimes. I hope you all are having a great week, and I hope each and every one of you is taking full advantage of the opportunities that are coming your way. Hey, here's what else you need to know. If you like what you heard on the show, please share this episode on your social pages or with anyone who you think might benefit from The Modern Actor. By helping me get the word out, I can connect with more industry leaders to bring more content to you in the future. You can also subscribe to this podcast on iTunes and leave us a review. That would help get this show ranked or subscribe to the Modern Actor newsletter for updates on future guests, articles, tips, and more. I would be eternally grateful for a review or if I started seeing some Modern Actor episodes pop up on your social media pages. That would be awesome, guys. Lastly, as a gift to you, head over to themodernactor.com to get your free download of the free audition checklist PDF from The Modern Actor. After five years of auditioning here in LA, I've been on hundreds of auditions and I've gained tons of knowledge on what makes a successful audition. I share tips that I've gained that help me go from co-star to series regular in one year. I've also included advice from the things I've learned from sitting in on casting sessions as a reader because you can learn so much more about your own audition technique by watching others. So if you have time after the episode, I encourage you to swing over to the Modern Actor website and download the PDF guide for free. Thanks for all your support. Stay hungry, my friend, and I'll see you on the next one.